Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from Homesite, and today we're going to be covering part two of our how to automate a garage door with a Node MCU and a relay board. Let's go! So part one covers taking our Node MCU and tasmatizing it and taking a relay board and wiring them up together. Now this part is going to cover the configuration in Home Assistant, we're going to set it up as a cover, we're going to set up the switches, we're going to use Node-RED to control some automations as well. So without, we're not going to talk about this anymore, I hope you like this video, give it a like down at the bottom, subscribe to my channel and let's get stuck in. Of course that's great, but we don't want to have to log onto the web page of our Tasmotor device every time we want to open the garage door. We want to integrate it into our home assistant so that we can use it from she who must not be named, from Google Home, from your Siri, from your Apple Watch, from whatever you want. And of course we want to be able to use it in Node-RED as well so we can do our automations. So that's exactly what we're going to do next. So I've got a few things open here. First of all I've got my Tasmota screen, I've got a Lovelace dashboard and I've got Node-RED. So first of all we need to configure MQTT in our Tasmota. Now if you haven't done this before, you want to check out my MQTT and Zigbee to MQTT video because I'll talk about setting up an MQTT broker and, and what the MQTT part does. Now, so we're going to go into configuration, we're going to go to configure MQTT and we're going to put our host in, which in my case is the port, I'm going to leave mine as the standard 1883, now that needs to match what your MQTT broker is sending in. We can leave client alone, now I'm going to put in my user, MQTT underscore user, and the password. Now this bit here you could leave as default, and that means that it will send the topic in, so when you want to send it a command, or it, when it sends out a status, it will use this topic. Now I'm going to change mine to node MCU garage underscore garage and save. Now that will reboot and if we send a command and go to the console you should see that it will send out a status. Here we go, so here's our status, so we've got stat node MCU garage and result and we know we'll also be able to do that with a command as well. So that's our node MCU talking MQTT to our Mosquito or our whatever MQTT broker you're using. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test this in node red to make sure that I can talk to it. So I'm going to take an MQTT out node I'm going to make sure this is configured to talk to my local machine. Now I have very, I have a Docker version of Node-RED as well, but we don't need to worry about that. We don't need to fill in topic, so I'm going to send that in in an inject node in a second. QoS, I'm going to set to 2, because I always want it to happen. And I'm going to set retain to false. Now you can give it a name if you like as well. I'm going to add an inject node. Here we go. Why that up. In here, I'm going to change the payload to a string, which is on. I'm going to set my topic. Now, my topic, I'm going to take from Tasmo to here. So if we look at this, this is power one. So this is our relay. So we can put this as our topic within our inject node. Now, this says, says stat, and stat is status. If we change that to CMND, like that, this should send an on message to that topic. Now let's give it a go. Let's also set, I'm going to copy that as well, and this, and turn that to an off. Line them up nicely and press deploy. Now when I inject this, we can hear hopefully in the background, that we've got control of the relay. And equally, if we wanted to do the same for relay two, we can change that power number two, and the same for this. Great, 
So now if we wanted to control it manually using MQTT, then we absolutely could. However, if we want it to appear as a device in our Home Assistant, we're going to have to do a little bit more. Now the way that my garage door works is all it needs is a small pulse, a small short across the up to ground or the down to ground and that will start the motor up spinning in the right direction and unless interrupted it'll go all the way down until the motor stops or all the way up until the motor stops. Now this might be slightly different, you might have to time it for a certain period of time in which case no red would be great for that. You'd be able to put a delay of a certain period, allow it to run for let's say 3.6 seconds if that's the right duration and you could stop it after that. However, all I need to be able to do is turn it on for a short duration and I'm automatically going to turn it off. Now I'm going to automate that in Node Red in a moment, but first of all, I'm going to set it up in File Explorer manually through my configuration.yaml. If you're using this Tasmatized Node MCU and really a module for something that isn't a garage door, then this next bit is definitely for you. If you're using it for a garage door as well, you're going to need to do this bit and the bit after. So here you can see I've added in the a garage open switch and a garage close switch. So this is all under the switch domain. So if I scroll up, you'll find switch colon. So here, all I've done is that CMND node MCU underscore garage forward slash power one. And that's exactly the same as we will have found the topic in here. I've put the payload off as off and the payload on as on. And therefore, when we flick that switch, it will switch it from off to on. And I've done exactly the same for close with power two. So that's the, the second relay on that board. So that's great. So let's test that out. So I'm going to open up another tab. First of all, I'm going to make sure this is saved, which it is. I'm going to go to my server controls, check configuration, and I'm just going to reload my MQTT entities. Great, so now into our Lovelace dashboard. So you can see I have a third tab here with the garage door symbol. Um, if you're not sure on how to set that up, then you want to check out my creating a Lovelace interface. So I've just got that MDI garage icon. I'm going to add a card. I'm just going to do a simple button. I'm going to search for garage and garage open, save and garage close. Now obviously you could change the icons and do all sorts of things with that if you wanted to, but that's fine for now. And I'm just going to come out of the edit mode. So now you can see that I can turn on the garage open relay and off and the garage close relay and off as well. Now I want it only to be a momentary press. And so I'm going to jump back into my node red and I'm going to put a state change. So if there's an event state change here, I'm going to just open up my, um, I'm going to add in here my garage open. And if I'm going to say if that goes on, so if that's on for zero minutes, I'm just going to leave that as it was. I'm going to put a delay in as well. So if that goes on, if state is true, so that's gone on, I want it to delay just for a second, it's fine. And then I want a call service node. Here we go. Connect those two together. And this is going to be domain switch because that's what I've got it set up as. I want it to turn off. And the entity ID is going to be garage open, switch.garage open. And you can just take that off the, uh, the add the comma at the end as if you're going to add multiple. So I'm going to press done to that and deploy. Now, in theory, once that's reconnected, I can come to here and my garage close should stay on because I haven't set that one up yet. But if I do my garage open, it should go back automatically, which it does. So I click on and it turns itself off after a second. So I'm just going to repeat that for the garage close. And just test that might have been a bit too quick. There we go. Fantastic. So real simple automation just to turn the relay back off once it's been on for a second. So that's great. But 
and that's fine if you wanted to do a manual connection like that however I wanted to see it as a cover as in a gar I want it to know that it's a garage door so I'm going to jump back into my file editor and in this cover section now this is a bit more complicated because you could set it up as a simple cover however then you wouldn't be able to refer to the other switches that are in the system i.e. the open and the close so I'm going to provide you this text obviously I'm going to provide you all of this text anyway in a link in the description below however this template I'm just going to talk you through this briefly so this is a, a template that can comprise of multiple different other things so in this instance I've got um, the cover and it's a garage door device class is garage friendly name can be garage door or whatever you want it to be now this value template is going to be what's looking for the state of this entity so this is going to be classed as a single entity this is going to be a garage door entity now at the minute I'm just using this input boolean however that could be a um, an RF um, read switch um, a door sensor it could be a, um, a Zigbee read sensor it could be anything you like now I have um, I want to replace on with open and off with closed now so if you're getting an on and an off signal like I do with my RF sensor that I actually have on my garage door you're going to want to replace that with an open or closed and incidentally if you're doing it with an input boolean as well which I'm only doing for testing that incidentally gives you an on and off and actually I want it to read open or closed instead and that's just with a simple regex expression so next I want to tell it how to open the cover so if I want to if I click on the entity I want it to open it's going to run the service switch dot turn on and then it looks at this entity which is switch.garage underscore open so that is that entity that we've already configured that switch that we, we've now configured to automatically turn off after a second and we've got a close cover which is exactly the same but obviously the close type and then the icon template all I want it to do is I want it to set that icon template based on this entity here input boolean dot demo garage door on so if it's on I want it to show the garage door is open failing that I want it to show just garage okay so in short you can copy and paste this from my page that I will put a link to in the description below you need to set your on and your off or your open and your close in here and here and this bit here is exactly is just for the state now I've already tested that but normally you will need to go to save server controls check configuration now you'll notice there is no cover types here so you, I would advise doing a proper restart at that point to make sure that it does pick that device up so I'm going to jump back to my Lovelace demo I'm going to put this into edit mode I'm going to add a card and again I'm going to add in garage cover and I can click show state as well I'm also going to add in my input boolean for my demo garage door. So this is my my open or close sensor, technically. So if I press, so we're now closed at the moment. So if I press open, it's still doing that one second. Now, in theory, if I click this is closed at the moment so if I click that button you can see it also triggered that garage open now I'm gonna open the garage door using that sensor so I've just turned that sensor on and you can see that that state has now changed if I click it again because it was in the open state <coughs> it's triggered the, the garage close state and so that's now closed perfect all done so that's a nice simple way of setting up your garage automation for about £10 as far as I'm concerned. Now obviously if you are using your Node MCU for something that isn't a garage door you could have probably stepped in a slightly earlier state and you'd already had these switches and you could do whatever you like with those. 
So that's it, we're all done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I always welcome comments, questions, anything like that. I'll always try to make sure I respond. So if you haven't done so already, please give it this video a like and that'll let YouTube's algorithm know that it's a really cool video. If you subscribe to my channel as well, you'll make sure you don't miss out on any future ones. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I've been Simon from Amazon.